We have a wide range of exercises you can do to target the upper back, that thoracic spine area. We've included the best mobility exercises you can do and we'll follow up with another video on the best strength exercises for this area that a lot of people miss. So make sure you subscribe to support the channel and get notifications to know when this is coming. Hi, my name is Rob from AMR Physio. With these exercises, you don't have to do every single one, but can pick different ones from different sections that we've split them into and that you find most beneficial for you. These exercises are also great if you have pain in that area, which we'll discuss more later in the video. Let's dive straight into the exercise you can do, starting with the first section, which is flexion and extension. So the back rounding and the chest going out. The first in this is the kneeling cat cow. So rather than the traditional cat cow, where you'll be on all fours, this time you'll be keeping the pelvis still by sitting back on your heels and focusing the movement at the upper back, rounding the back and then bringing the chest through. And repeat this back and forth. The next for this you can try is the classic downward dog, this time not focusing as much on the stretch of the sciatic nerve or the legs, but more on that thoracic extension. So this will be easier if you're bending the knees a bit more so you can increase the upper body work. Come in and out of this, relaxing off and then going back into the movement. Another variation you can try is a kneeling mountain. This will get your arms involved, sit onto your heels again and this time reach above your head and look up and then come back down and look down. Again, repeating on and off for this. The next section for mobility is a focus on rotation work with the first being the sprinter stretch. You want to send one leg backwards and place the hand down on the same side to make balance easier. You will then rotate with the other hand pointing up towards the ceiling. It doesn't matter so much if the knee is on or off the floor as you're focusing it on the back rotation, but keeping it off can add a bit of a hip flexor stretch, which is never a bad thing. Go in and out of this, so bring the arm down and then back up. Next you can try is thread the needle. Have your forearm rested on the floor and you'll be on your knees. You'll then thread your arm through the other side, reaching as far as you can to increase the rotation. Then come back out and rotate slightly the other way and repeat. The final for rotation work is the Texas twist. Start laying on your back, turn to a side to place your knee on the floor. The hip will be bent at 90 degrees. Then with straight arms, Open up the body, rotate and go as far as you can, turning your head as well. Trying to get the back of the hand flat to the floor. Return to the start and then repeat. The next section is working on side flexion. Starting with the seated lat stretch. Sitting onto your heels, raise one arm up and then reach the hand over to the other side. Working to get the majority of side flexion at the upper back, so keeping both bum cheeks on the heels and not lifting one side off to try and get further using more of the lower back. Now, this wouldn't be complete without addressing some mobility in the neck. With a lot of the muscles connecting the neck and upper back together, one of the best stretches you can do for this is going into a direction as though sniffing your armpit, getting your hand over the back of your head to increase the stretch, and then also adding some side flexion at the thoracic spine to add an even further stretch. Loads of people are tight in this area and it's likely that you'll find benefit from this. If you find you actually have pain in the thoracic area, some of these exercises can definitely help. Also think about getting it checked and ensuring it is a muscular or joint issue and also look at other aspects of life that may be contributing. If you're in static positions all day, sitting or standing, not moving around enough, this can have an impact on that area. On the other side of the spectrum, overloading can also affect if you're constantly lifting and using those muscles without enough rest or recovery. Pain won't always be from the mechanical aspect. Also look at how well you're sleeping, what your stress levels are like, what you're perceiving the pain to be and how worried you are about it. These can all feed into the system. So as much as these exercises can help, there's a lot of other areas that can also be addressed. 
If you are suffering with pain, then check out this video here, which goes through potential causes for this and what other exercises you might find beneficial, depending on what it is that's causing it. We also have a video here where you can follow along to a lot of the exercises included here if wanting to get into a good routine of working mobility in that area and guidance with timings.